Welcome, this is Aubin, Voice for the People. I'm Anu Kelly with the news. Vice President of the Oromia Region State, Shimali Sabdisa, said Oromo and Afar should discharge their national responsibilities to further connect the two people's long-standing values. The President, president of Afar Region State, Awal Arba, for his part, stated that the region is keen to bond the two people's values more. Tanzga Mulatu at the account. The Oro Afar People to People Conference has been held in Adama Town, where the region's higher government officials and a representative of the people were presented. On the opening session of the conference, Vice President of the Oromo Regional States, Shimala Sabdisa, said the Oromo and Afar people have a lot of common values which couldn't easily disconnect it. The Vice President noted that the relation between the two people are not a recent phenomenon, it is a long standing event. Shimala highlighted that the two regions' people should give priority for peace and stability of the country. The Oromo and the Afar Hizb are the same as the one and the other and the other and the other and the other. The Oromo and the Afar merged from the same root and they have one kinship. They share the same culture and language and live together for centuries. As our father said earlier, they are the main roots. Therefore, this conference has been organized to strengthen more the relation we had. If we have a strong bondage, we can realize peace and stability of our respective regions as well as the country at large. So this kind of conference will held at different levels in the regions. According to the chief administrator of the Oromo Regional State, with the conference held between Afar and the Oromo people at Adama Town, the neighboring East African countries like Djibouti and others will excite more. Adding, through cooperatively working, Oromo and Afar people have to discharge their national responsibility. Afar and Oromo, and them, yet a sasser, husband. Aunum, Hulem, look, yes, our river is a strong bridge between the two people. It always flows to Afar through holding the incident happening in Oromia. This means if there is peace in Oromia, Afar hear the good news. At the same time, if there is unrest in Oromia, Afar will suffer. So our relation is beyond that. Recently, there is a good beginning in our country in keeping peace and stability of our area. Afar and the Oromia region should play a leading role to sustain it. To do so, every Ethiopian can freely move from place to place, work wherever they want and they like. President of Afar Regional State, Awalar Bafori Spar, said that his region is eager enough to strengthen the relation between Oromia and to effectively use the opportunities get from the Brotherhood. <laughs> We are here not to solve the problems we faced. We are here not to reconciliation, but we are here to inherit to our children the values and norms we received from our fathers. We are here to discuss about our future because we are brothers. There are a lot of opportunities in Oromia. For instance, as a country, there are large skilled manpower in Oromia. It has large territorial boundary. In addition, the country's export backbone coffee is found here. Therefore, these all things are a big opportunities for us. That is why we came here and our region is ready to work with the Oromia Regional Estates in various aspects. Lucy was found, by the way, in Afar Region State and also Ertale. You know, and a hot um, volcano, magmas are around there. That tourist destinations are being made there around. Deputy Mayor of Infinite City, Engineer Takela Uma, uh, has vowed to take actions to prevent land grabbing and construction of illegal houses in the metropolitan city. Mayor to take measures against land grabbing. Thanks a lot again, as more. The Venice City Administration announced that illegal construction has been expanded in Imbole, Yeka, Agaki, Lafto, and Kolfe subsidies. Vice Mayor of Finfinna City Administration, Takaloma, while briefing media on the issue, said that the necessary measures will be taken to stop illegal construction in the city. <laughs> We are historically responsible to safeguard this city. We are also legally responsible to administer it. 
Chief administrators of the five subsidies said since few months, legal construction has been highly expanding in various parts of the city administration. <laughs> The Roland envisions by the name of religion. This is a very critical issue. Unless our public is aware of it, it will have a bad consequence. Most of them very lands are government owned. For instance, in some areas, the land proposed for the public service has been seized by legal individuals. The administrators revealed that government structure at different level have been participating on these illegal acts. In some areas, when we take measures on illegal constructors, our structures were trying to stop us. So this indicates that government structures have taken part in these illegal acts. Commissioner of Infina City Police Commission Geto Arga on the event called upon the public to actively participate on exposing and stopping legal construction. Vice Mayor of Infina City Administration General Chuck Loma underscored that in the next two weeks the city administration will take decisive measures on those engaged in illegal acts. <laughs> Two weeks from today, we will take serious measures. Between this time, we will seriously identify and we will discuss with the public at large. If the illegal constructors remove the construction, it is good. If not, we will demolish it. The federal government should stand by the side of us. The Ethiopian Human Rights Commission said collaborative work is mandatory to scale up the role of civil societies. The a consultative meeting aimed at advancing human rights in Ethiopia has been kicked off in Finnish city. Welcome on to more reports. Office of the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights, East Africa Regional Office in collaboration with Consortium of Ethiopia Rights Organization has organized a two-day consultative meeting for Ethiopian civil society organizations, human rights defenders and other stakeholders. The meeting is aimed at strengthening civic space and exploit newly appointed opportunities to advance human rights work in Ethiopia. Executive Director of Consortium of Ethiopia Rights Organization, Mesut Gaba, said that the current situation in Ethiopia has provided a healthy environment for human rights advocates. The situation in our country in the past five, six years was very difficult for human rights advocates, human rights organizations and human rights defenders. And now we are very much hopeful that this reform could bring more opportunities for human rights organizations and human rights defenders to work with institutions like the Office of High Commissioner for Human Rights and others who could be very much interested in supporting the reform from the human rights perspective. Regional representative of Office of Human Rights of East Africa, Ms. Nanila Overhaul, for her part praised the suitable environment created for human rights advocates. We, as all of us know, the new government, the reforms in the country, has presented us a golden opportunity to build this country together. Why do I say build? You civil society have a huge role to play, a massive role to play in the building of societies, and in this case, in the building of Ethiopia. The importance of your presence cannot be overemphasized. You are the voice of the communities all over this country. You are representatives of people who ordinarily would not have a platform. Deputy Chief Commissioner of Ethiopian Human Rights Commission, Commissioner Ishet Gabriel Haile addressing a speech called for all civil society and concerned bodies to work in collaboration so as to scale up their role in ensuring human rights. Ethiopian Human Rights is glad to have this opportunity to affirm and renew its commitment to engage and work with civil society for the, co the common agenda, which is the protection and promotion of human rights. Moreover, it's also my pleasure to be given a chance uh, of throwing a few words at the prime time before this August meeting, especially after the amendment of the restrictive legal framework of CSOs and that kept us apart for years. On the events, many research papers have been presented and get discussed. Participants of the discussion have also reacted and forwarded their suggestions. 
the new government has created a golden opportunity for civil societies to build the nation. What a saying. The African Day will be celebrated in the premises of the Ethiopian Embassy in Kenya, it has been said. The day is aimed to strengthen African unity. Addis Asaf has more. African Day will be celebrated in the Embassy of Ethiopia in Kenya on May 25, 2019, Gregorian calendar. The main objective of celebrating African Day every year is to strengthen African unity and solve African shared problems. Ethiopian Embassy to Kenya has been given the chance to host the celebration is because Ethiopia had played a lot since the formation of African Union. Meles Alem, ambassador of Ethiopia to Kenya, talked to Ethiopian news agencies that Ethiopia has a Alliance share in maintaining African pride starting from the era of colonialism. Ethiopia is also contributed immense deeds in terms of keeping peace and security and climate change matters in the continent of Africa among others. Ethiopia has chosen to host Africans Day this year. Various embassies based in Nairobi, Kenya. We Africans have our own collection which deals on African matters. Ambassadors of different African countries who reside in Kenya witness that Ethiopia is chosen to host the event because of the incalculable contribution that the country has scored. To celebrate the day colorfully, an executive committee has been organized from different African countries' representatives under the command of Ethiopia. The ambassador also says the day will be counted as the day which Africans exhibit their culture, custom, tradition, and values. And we also take it as a good platform to introduce our common values to the rest of the continent. The objective of the African Day is to work together, to show strong unity, to commemorate achieved trophies, and to tackle obstacles of Africa. Obviously, the platform brings Africans together. Apart from that, it would be a good setting for cultural diplomacy. On that specific day, all Africans who reside in Kenya will show their cultural staffs. African Day has been celebrated since 1963 Gregorian calendar. On the occasion, each and every country will exhibit it is own value, culture, tradition, and customs, food and music. Mella Salem, new ambassador of Ethiopia to Kenya, he replaced uh, Ambassador Dina Mufti, who is now ambassador to four countries, Egypt, Lebanon, Jordan, and Libya, and he's working there. The scholars uttered that armed political parties should unite to ensure the nation's benefit than sticking on snatching of votes. Disgruntling armor will benefit the antagonists, so it is better to work on the, uh, on the set. The scholars, Fukadu Brano has the details. Political and development scholar Bonsa Unetu said that Oromo political parties should focus on their unity rather than maximizing their number to practically stand for the benefits of their people. <laughs> It is a great loss for Oromo people to elect the 19 political parties of Oromo. These parties are going to get their own voices. Oromo has 200 seats in parliament and the parties are going to divide those seats individually. This can cause two problems. First, Opidio will lose enough voice in EPRDF to lead the country and the chance of other political parties of Oromo will fall on political parties of other nations. Bonta note that all Oromo political parties should work with due emphasis to establish two or three strong political parties to get enough voice on the upcoming election. Vice head of the Youth League of the Oromo Federalist Congress Party, Gourmet Sayano, underscored that political parties so for Oromo should be exemplary for their communities through uniting. It is expected from political parties of Oromo to be united and exemplary for the public. However, now we are looking unity of the Oromo people rather than the political parties. Oromo political parties were paid a lot of sacrifices due to lack of unity among them. Unless we united, we will repeat the same thing. He adds that the political system of the country encourages to establish multi-political parties rather than supporting and encouraging the strongest political parties in the past. 
Gourmesa underlined that his party believes in unity, adding that they have been working with special attention in this regard. He also called upon all Oromo political parties to be united, not to repeat the past mistakes. We should take a time and discuss our issues. If we do so, we can solve our problems and work for our people properly. Assistant Professor Murat Shanko, for his part, note that fear of Oromo political parties will be victory for anti groups. Hearing this in mind, all should work with due attention. Failurity of Oromo people is victory for others. We couldn't understand this. We can achieve it when we understand each other and united.